Hey all, welcome to ShareTrek. This is Raj here. Friends, I am very excited today because of a great news about Verve Therapeutics. And therefore, I have postponed my video on CRISPR Therapeutics. It's going to come tomorrow. Um, but today's news is very exciting at two levels. One is from the point of view of in vivo editing. The other is from the point of view of base editing and the future of these kind of therapies going forward. I think Verve and Intelia are uh, doing a lot of breakthrough work with FDA uh, in order to rationalize uh, the process of approval and the clinical trials and the methodologies. So I think uh, that's where uh, the significance is. So the news today is that Verve Therapeutics announced the lifting of clinical hold and clearance of its investigational new drug application or IND application by the US FDA to conduct a trial in the United States evaluating Verve 101 for the treatment of heterozygous familiar hypercholesteremia or HEFH. -H. Verve 101 is an investigational in vivo base editing medicine designed to be a single course treatment that inactivates the PCSK9 gene in the liver to durably lower blood low density lipoprotein cholesterol or blood LDL-C. HEFH is a prevalent and life-threatening inherited disease characterized by lifelong elevations in blood LDLC and accelerated atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or ASCVD. In this video, I take a deeper dive into what this means for the company and its future prospects. Let's get started. Welcome back. Cardiovascular disease is the number one cause of death worldwide and uh, a common and modifiable risk factor uh, for this disease is uh, cardiovascular disease is the high cholesterol. Past research shows if a person reduces their cholesterol by 10%, they can lower their risk of uh, heart-related issues by up to 30%. Although there are currently medications available to help lower cholesterol, they can sometimes have side effects. And also adherence to a regular medicine intake can be difficult. A condition called FEFH is caused by specific defect in a PCSK9 gene. FEFH is characterized by high LDLC levels due to defective protein PCSK9. Verve 101 works by targeting a specific gene in the liver called PCSK9 and uh, the treatment edits the PCSK9 gene to turn it off. This results in lower levels of bad cholesterol known clinically as LDLC in the blood. By making a single A to G change or adenine to guanine change in the DNA genetic sequence of PCSK9, a gene located in chromosome 1, Verve 101 aims to inactivate the target gene. Verve reasons that inactivation of PCSK9 gene has uh, previously been shown to upregulate LDLR uh, expression, leading to lower LDLC levels and thus reducing the risk of uh, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or ASCVD, of which HEFH is a subtype. Verve 101 is a single course gene editing treatment designed to reduce the low density lipoprotein cholesterol that drives HEFH, a subtype of ASCVD. And Verve 101 consists of an adenine base editor, messenger RNA that Verve has licensed from Beam Therapeutics, as well as an optimized guide RNA targeting the PCSK9 gene packaged in an engineered lipid nanoparticle. The current standard of care for HEFH falls short with fewer than 20% of patients reaching their LDLC goal levels. This is mainly because of the demanding requirements of the existing treatment model, which necessitates strict patient adherence, consistent access to healthcare, and uh, extensive healthcare infrastructure. However, Verve 101 represents a groundbreaking advancement. It has the potential to revolutionize cardiovascular disease care by achieving sustained ultra-low LDLC levels after a single treatment, potentially maintaining these levels for an extended duration. However, we should know that FEFH and FH is not the only possible uh, uh, defect from PCSK9 gene. Before we get too excited, we need to understand the overall scope of PCSK9 gene. So far, five different mutations of PCSK9 genes have been known and they have been associated with the following five conditions. One is familiar hypercholesteremia or FH. The other is autosomal recessive hypercholesteremia or ARH. 
And then we have heterozygous familial hypercholesteremia, which is HEFH. And then we have hypercholesteremia with autosomal dominant in inheritance. And we also have resistance to statin medications. So these are the five conditions associated with uh, defect in PCSK9. If you look at this image, which I have found on Instagram from uh, Bioscience, it's a wonderful channel on Instagram. You guys should check them out. It nicely explains how exons become mRNA or recipe for the protein. And we do not know which uh, adenine uh, in this chain is being edited using the uh, base editing uh, in vivo by verb 101. So let me put up this uh, diagram first. In this diagram, you can see that uh, a DNA template consists of um, alternate uh, exons and alternate uh, introns. So you have an exon followed by an intron, followed by exon, followed by an intron. And we all know that um, the chromosomes contain genes, and uh, the genes uh, would be the recipe for the protein. And if you look at this diagram out here from Bioscience uh, of Instagram, you should follow that channel, uh, or at least check them out. You will see that the exons and the introns on one of the strands are the primary mRNA transcript. And then we have something called as spisosomes, which uh, kind of engulf the introns and create them into what is called as a laryte excised. It's a circular uh, shape. And when it's removed and the exons are all joined back to back, then they become the mRNA. So this mRNA transcripts can now be translated by the tRNA and the protein produced. And in case of uh, PCSK9, uh, something similar happens. Uh, so the PCSK9 gene uh, is uh, converted into a mRNA. And uh, in this mRNA, there is a A, which is supposed to be a G. And that is what Verve 101 corrects using the adenine base editor from uh, Beam Therapeutics. So uh, it's going to be very interesting to see uh, how, uh, how the patients um, uh, react uh, to the next uh, stage of the clinical trial. The PCSK9 gene is composed of various components, as I showed you, the exons and introns. So when all the exons are joined together and the mRNA is made, uh, there is an A out there, which is not supposed to be an A, but a G. And that's the correction that uh, Verb 101 makes uh, using uh, base editing. The PCSK9 gene, for example, consists of 12 exons and 11 introns. The exons 1 through 12 are spread across the gene and contain the information necessary for producing the PCSK9 gene, uh, PCSK9 protein. The total number of nucleotides in the PCSK9 gene can vary slightly between individuals due to natural genetic variation. On average, the PCSK9 spans approximately 22,000 to 23,000 nucleotides, which code for the PCSK9 protein. Mutations or variations within this gene can lead to changes in the PCSK9 protein affecting its uh, function and in some cases leading to conditions such as FH or those five conditions that we spoke about. Understanding these conditions and the role of PCSK9 in cholesterol metabolism has led to the development of PCSK9 inhibitors, a class of medications designed to lower LDLC levels and reduce the risk of cardiovascular events, especially in individuals who do not respond well to traditional therapies or who have mutations in the PCSK9 gene. Verve and Intellia, I believe, are paving the way, uh, paving the path for FDA, for base editing therapy and in vivo therapies. And a lot of lessons have been learned in the process when uh, Intellia was put on hold and asked to provide information to FDA and then the hold li lifted. And now the hold on Verve has also been lifted because Verve has been able to provide all the information that FDA needed in order to confidently authorize pro proceeding to the next stage of the clinical trial. So uh, all of these things are going to help subsequent base edited therapies uh, to move much faster in the FDA process, including streamlining of the review process. That said, Verve may be on a lucrative market with Verve 101 now getting into uh, a progressive stage of the clinical trial. While Verve 101 is making progress, Verve 102 is aiming uh, to leverage on the lessons from Verve 101 and use Verve's proprietary GAINAC-LNP or liquid nanoparticle delivery technology and preclinical trials in NHP is using uh, Verb 102 
uh, with uh, their proprietary LNP delivery has demonstrated uh, really good results. NHP is non-human primates, and it's a preclinical kind of a trial. And uh, it has showed the effectiveness in the in vivo gene editing in the liver and significant PCSK9 protein reduction in non-human primates. Overall, I personally think this is a big deal because um, just focusing on PCSK9 alone can yield huge dividends in terms of addressing a whole bunch of disorders uh, related to cholesterol. And once VERB 101 is approved, then with a proven delivery mechanism, it becomes much easier for VERB to create new therapies to target other PCSK9 defects, not only in the lab, but also with uh, FDA. And all the knowledge that VERB is now accumulating can make it a PCSK9 specialist, and uh, future uh, therapies can be uh, arriving much faster and all the benefits of uh, putting the efforts at this point of time on VERB 101 and subsequently on VERB 102 can yield a lot of results for faster progress with other therapies uh, targeting PCSK9 defects. In terms of market reaction, VERB went negative today. The share price dropped. However, Beam bounced back more than 7% as the sharp sell-off due to cutting programs uh, had taken the share too low. Uh, too fast. And I think we have a kind of a dead cat bounce on beam therapeutics and the prices have jumped up 7% today for beam therapeutics. And the genomic industry, I think, has a tough period ahead while all eyes are on exacel and lower cell. We expect both to be approved. If there anything goes wrong out there or a delay comes in, that can further drive the mark, uh, market down. But if the, everything goes well there, that can be a catalyst for the genomics market. And also people are looking at the Fed and the interest rate regime and the wars in Ukraine and Russia, as well as the uh, growing conflict in the Middle East. And people are also nervously looking at the China-Taiwan reaction. So overall, it's a very volatile market, and I'm holding back... To Today I sold uh, my holdings of Berkshire Hathaway um, and I'm hoping that the share prices are going to fall further out there. And um, of course, I do not regret having sold uh, Google yesterday because uh, the shares are still languishing at a level below what I sold it at. So I'm looking at this very carefully. I'm a bit nervous at this point of time. This is my personal opinion. Please do your own research before you make any decision on buying or selling shares. But right now, I'm feeling very apprehensive with the overall market. And I think there is further um, uh, consolidation or further going down. Uh, before the shares would go up. And I'm uh, still waiting to buy FNGU at sub-140 levels. Uh, so that's my target. I'm looking for it again tomorrow. So that's all for today, my friends. And I'll catch up with you again tomorrow with the video on CRISPR. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.